After I did some reviews of Hillsong and Elevation and Bethel, you guys came out in the droves requesting that I review particular different bands, worship groups. So today I'm going to be reviewing some of those which you've requested. Let's look at their theology and their lyrics. Let's talk about the heart of worship, all so that we know God, feel God, and worship him biblically because we truly believe that the Bible is true, that it's active, and that it has instructions for our lives. Let's begin. All right, people. Now, every single time I do one of these videos, which you guys like love, by the way, there's always a few people who come up from the woodwork and they're like critiquing me for critiquing worship bands, which is ironic in and of itself. And Joe and I always have to giggle about it. However, obviously we're not here to like cast judgment on other Christians. We don't wanna sit here like from a high horse and judge other believers. I hope that you're watching this from like a worshipful intent on we wanna be faithful to the scriptures and like what is the right way to worship God based on like scripture and based on our theological beliefs. How can we be as faithful and God honoring in our worship as possible. So maybe possibly if you clicked on this video with the wrong heart intent, like let's hate on some Christian bands. Let's check ourselves before I wreck ourselves. And let's think really quickly about that heart intent. Let's just pause for a moment and picture what we have promised awaiting us. If you have your Bibles, flip there. In Revelation 21, we see a picture of what we have to await as believers. Like our hope, like where our eyes are centered as we run this race, as we live, Live this life as we preach the gospel, our eyes should be centered there. Like a racehorse has those blinders on. So Revelation 21 gives us this picture. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw a holy city, a new Jerusalem. So the Bible gives us a picture of garden to a city. Super cool. Like we should totally unpack that one of these days. Coming down up from heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I want you to think Hosea, unworthy, adulterous, unfair faithful, but yet still a bride. That's what I want you to picture, okay? And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, this is John, behold, the dwelling place of God is no longer at Zion, far off, super holy places. It's with man. What? Did, did we just read that correctly? The first people to have read this would be like shaking in their boots right now. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. Are you sure about that? Because that's not how the gods in the ancient Near East worked. That's not how the Roman gods in first century, you know, Rome worked. Is that a misprint here? He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as they are God. Think of a king living with his people, not in some lofty palace far, far away that you can't get inside of. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Behold, I'm making all things new. We're on verse five. And he said this, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. We can trust in them. We can hold on to them like they're true because we know that they're true because we believe that they're true. And he said, it is done. Guys, the battle has been won. But guys, I want you to have this passage on your face. Like put it on like glasses. That's what I'm trying to hold up here, some glasses. Wear that as your lens today while we look at these lyrics from these different worship bands. Let's have that eternal perspective when we think about the perfect or the best or what is the most theologically correct kind of lyrics in worship, okay? So let's dive in. The first band that I wanna look at is Shane and Shane. And I gotta be honest with you guys, like I know me some Shane and Shane, but I don't know any recent songs. So let's see what comes up. I'm just typing in Shane and Shane. You've already won. I don't know if I know this song. You've already won is like a good truth. Yes, he has already won. And we've just read about that like in Revelation 21. So that's kind of cool. No, this video opens with Revelation 21. That gives me chills. That's like such a God thing. I did not plan this. That's so crazy. It's been a while since I've seen something like that happen in my videos. Okay, and then they have the text. We know how the story ends. That's really cool. There's peace that outlasts darkness. The tonality in his voice is incredible. It's been a little while since I've listened to Shane Shane, but oh, got me. Okay, I'm fighting a battle that you've already won. No matter what comes my way, I will overcome. I don't love the one line, I will overcome, but like I love, there's a peace that outlasts darkness. Like, the, it, like think about those words and does that not give you a level of hope? There is a peace that outlasts the darkness that I see all around me. There's a future grace that is mine today. How badly does the church need to hear that today, especially? There's mercy in the waiting, manna for today. Day. I like that. Yeah, so like this is a really good example of me or I language that 
ultimately points back to the Lord. Again, I don't love that one phrase, I will overcome, because it's not us overcoming, it's technically God who's already won the battle and overcome. Not like love it, but I'm okay with it because ultimately it's all on you have won the battle and that's like the next line. I'm totally being picky saying I don't love that one little phrase because how many times in my life do I not word stuff perfectly? All the time. In fact, there's hundreds of hours of proof of me not wording things correctly here on the internet. Do without what you like. I would give this like an eight out of 10 because it does bring it back to a battle that he's already been won. Two points taken off only because of that one thing. Let's go see their other songs. I will wait for you, Psalm 130. I'm gonna open up to Psalm 130. In darkest places I will call. So it seems very heavily reliant on Psalm 130, which is great. Psalm 130 is a song of sense. So they're sojourning to Jerusalem. They're on their way on like a holy pilgrimage and they're singing these songs to remind themselves why they're doing what they're doing as a worshipful act. Even the journey there is a worshipful act. And then they're also highly tied to the feasts and festivals. But real quick, let's look at what Psalm 130 is. Psalm 130 opens up with petition. I'm calling out for you. God, I need you, hear my voice. And we hear all of that lingo here in the lyrics of the song. But what's interesting is it doesn't end there. That's not the peak of the song because that's very me centric. And I would probably be a little bit critical of that if that's just like the ending of the song, if that's the meat of the song is God, I'm calling out to you, hear me. But look at what Psalm 130 does. After this petition, verses three through four, it goes into praise. But you, O oh Lord, there is forgiveness. You may be feared. It's praising God for who he is. Then it goes into patience. I will wait on you. And the song brings that back. I will wait for you. I will wait for you. On your word, I will rely. More than the watchman for the morning, more than the watchman for the morning. You guys might recognize that lingo. It's this, I've called out to you. I know who you are. Therefore, I will have patience and wait on you. And then finally, it ends in proclaiming these amazing truths of who God is, which again, we see in the lyrics of this song. It's beautiful. Like This is an amazing picture of what we see worship should be. It doesn't just end with me, I need this from you, God, like he's a vending machine. And that's the criticalness that I sometimes lean towards when it's very me and I centric language is because it shouldn't end there. That shouldn't be the meat of it. It should always end in praise of who God is or here proclamation of who he is. Really great. I would have to give this a 10 out of 10. It's like basically Psalm 130 copy and pasted. Okay, let's do one more Shane and Shane. You're beautiful. Oh. Yeah, I know this. This was my jam in high school. You're beautiful. Oh, this is gonna sting if I don't end up loving the lyrics because I have some good memories worshiping hard to this song. So I'd be really sad if I don't end up loving this. Okay. We're planets are in motion in galaxies. I see your power in the moonlight night where the planets are in motion and the galaxies are bright. Okay, I see your power. What is that verse? All of creation is shouting his praises. It's a reflection of his goodness. Yes, that's a very biblical concept. When we arrive at eternity shore where death is just a memory and tears are no more, we'll enter in as the wedding bells ring. Your bride will come together and we'll sing, you're beautiful. It's a very zoomed out picture compared to what we just looked at on Psalm 130 where it was like almost line by line quoting Psalm 130. This is very zoomed out, big picture. You are a bird flying over the landscape of the Bible and summarizing with huge broad strokes and saying, God, you are beautiful. And yeah, that's very true. I would be curious because this is totally opinion. This is not evaluating on a theological basis, but in some ways, now that I look at it, it almost falls flat, like to say that he's beautiful. Maybe I wish it would say you're the most beautiful. You blow my mind at what my concept of beauty was, you know, something like that. Because to say you are beautiful, it could be sung to your wife, your child or a flower, you know? So in some ways I'm like, oh man, that kind of falls flat with the depths of what we're trying to communicate here. But that is pretty opinionated to say, I think. I just wish it was a little bit more. You're more than beautiful. You are the best of beauty, that kind of thing. Okay, so I'll give that one like a six out of 10. Bummed, man, because I loved that in high school. All right, the next band that we need to look at. Okay, we did Shane and Shane. Let me cross that off the list. Shout out to Pia, my virtual assistant, who went through all of y'all's comments and has been adding it into these. Can y'all see this? She adds it into these Excel documents so I know which one has like the most votes or whatever, and I go through the top voted ones. So you guys feel Feel free to keep on commenting your requests. And if they get enough, we will look at them. But this next one is Red Rocks Worship. Red Rocks 
super shit. Okay, the first song that comes up is The Battle Is Yours. Yeah, this song, I Know The Battle Is Yours. I Know The Battle, I Know The Battle, I Know The Battle Is Yours. Yeah, that's exactly what we opened up with on the first Shane and Shane song. How could I have fault with this? And they're basically just saying that over and over and over again. When I'm surrounded by the enemy and it feels like hope is far beyond my reach, I know the battle, the battle, the battle is yours. That's it. That's the message of the song. Just repeat it over and over again. This once again comes down to opinion on how much repetition is good versus when you have the opportunity to add a little bit more meat when I wish it would be a little bit more meaty. Maybe slightly on the edge of like, that is a bit repetitious and you have the opportunity you could put in a little bit more theological truth, but also repeating these truths to yourself, like the battle is his, the battle is his, the battle is his, can be really helpful. So it really comes down to personal opinion on the repetition. So I would give this an eight out of 10. What else? I will trust Red Rocks Worship. Oh, I will trust it. Amazing. Like reading through the lyrics just first off, I was like, wow, I really want to like this and it's beautiful. The more I started to get through the lyrics, I was like, mm, this is a little me centered. I see phrases like, oh, I will trust in you, only you, Lord, I will trust in you. You know, like that's a little like, that is a lot of like, I'm going to trust in you. You know, like you're not saving yourself. I love the intro. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm blindly trusting you now. That's using me and I language, but it's about him, you know, because it ends up on him. But there was a line that I didn't love. I hope you will not forsake me. Again, like the Psalms use that language, but in a context. We are after the cross. The Psalms were before the cross. David in a cave, fighting for his life, hiding for his life, trusting the Lord's promise that the Lord has anointed him as king and is gonna provide for him and protect him. We aren't in that exact situation, but there are times where we trust the Lord. I don't love the language though, like singing at him in worship to say like, I know you're not gonna forsake me because like, whoa, the cross already happened, you know? like. What more can he do to show that like he has won us? It's not about him forsaking us, you know? That's my, a little bit of a pushback that I don't love that language. And that's why I get a little bit like, ooh, we aren't the end all be all, you know? But I love the idea of like, come do what you wanna do. Whatever it looks like, you will do what only you can do. I wanna be where you are no matter how far it takes me. Like, I love those lines, like that is gold. And that's what I was reading going like, oh, I really like this. And the sound is amazing. But uh, there's a few lines where it just kind of ends on me trusting you, you end up repeating, I'm gonna trust in you, I'm gonna trust in you, I'm gonna trust in you, instead of repeating, Jesus, you are here, the old is washed away, good shepherd, lead my heart. Maybe those would be, I would rather repeat over and over again and end on. But let's see, there's a long like bridge or something. So bring on the waves, I'm loved by the one who anchors me. Oh, that's good. I have very mixed feelings about this song already. No fear of the grave, I walk with the king of victory. Now that is repetition that your girl will join in on. They are redeeming themselves. So I would have to give this an eight out of 10. I really think like I would be thrilled to sing this in my church, even despite like that one phrase that I don't love, especially because that meaty part, what was it again? Oh, they need to put this on a shirt if they don't already. So bring on the waves. I'm loved by the one who anchors me. No fear in the grave. I will walk with the king of victory. I. Love that. Ooh, Red Rocks. Okay, okay, I see you. I see you, Red Rocks. Okay, one more. Now here. Let's check out Now Here. Where was the darkness when hope was restored? Where was the feet when the Lord took a breath? When he stood in power. Okay, wow. I was, <laughs> there's a couple points there, like crying. I was trying really hard to not just like turn off the camera and start worshiping. But between reading the lyrics, seeing the title, like the beginning of the lyrics, it starts out with nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. And I was like, well, why is it titled now here? And then reading the lyrics and hearing her sing over the, where was the nowhere? Where was the death? Where was the doubt? Where was the despair, defeat? Where was the sorrow? Where was the pain? And then hearing them say nowhere, nowhere, that's so good. And then to the ending of, I see joy rising, fear hiding, walls shaking, doubt running. It's now here. I see 
stand undefeated when Jesus is near. In his presence, my shame disappears. Love it. Love the concept behind the song. It brought me to tears. Yeah, everyone go check out Shane and Shane and Red Rock's music. This was an absolute hit. But guys, it doesn't end here though. It's not just about like listening to the right worship bands or the right theology. It also leads us to a heart of worship and asking ourselves, are we worshiping community? And I would really encourage you to find yourself some kind of church family or a church community, people to hold you accountable, to fellowship with, to worship alongside. And if you are homebound, I know I have a lot of shut-ins or people taking care of their spouses. I would really encourage you to just check out our Patreon page. We have an amazing group of ladies. I really think that my patrons are the best people out there. And we have an app where we get to send videos back and forth, message. We are actually blowing up that app. So if you are looking for a community and you can't make it to a church, you might want to check out the Patreon group. My Patreons are incredible. I will see you guys on Patreon or in this playlist here, checking out other worship songs and worship bands and seeing if they let us down or if they're totally biblical. I'll see you guys there.